I've heard a saying before, ounces equals pounds and pounds equals pain. If you've ever hiked up and down mountains or put mileage in in a day with a heavy pack on, then you know what I'm talking about. What's up guys? I'm Joe and welcome to Backcountry Treks. I love gear, I love backpacking, I love anything that has to do with outdoor adventure. If you love those things too, hit that like button and subscribe. Today I want to share some methods with you that have worked really well for me to help reduce pack weight and save space. Now these are things that have worked for me and many others. It does not mean they'll work for you, but I encourage you to go ahead and give them a try. Now most of what I'm going to talk about today pertains to three season backpacking, spring, summer, fall. Winter, I approach with a whole different mindset and I pack entirely different for winter. To me, it's like a whole different hobby in and of itself. So today's information is mostly spring, summer, fall. I want to start by talking about hydration, water. That's a big one. Water weight is heavy. Uh, two liters of water weighs about four pounds. First thing I want to recommend, I'm just going to come out and say it, for multi-day hikes, water bladders are stupid. Reason being, when a water bladder expands and you fill it up, it takes up, it expands and takes up a ton of precious space inside of your pack. When you stop to refill at a stream, you gotta undo your whole pack, pull the thing out, fill it up, put it all back in. It's just cumbersome. Also, if you don't have a trampoline back on your backpack, which is something that separates your back from the back of the backpack, that bladder is, can get uncomfortable and is pressing against you all day long while you're hiking and is just impractical in my opinion. And we've all started out with these Nalgene bottles. Uh, you know, you can sticker them up, they're pretty cool, whatever, but a one liter Nalgene bottle full of water weighs around two pounds, 10 ounces. So something that I've done and a lot of people have done to lighten that is switching to life water or smart water bottle of some sort. These weigh about two pounds, five ounces when they're full. So you're saving five ounces per bottle. That's a total of 10 ounces just from switching from Nalgene to a smart water bottle or life water bottle or an off-brand, it doesn't have to be name brand. You can get these at obviously any gas station. Dollar General is a really cheap option. The other cool thing about smart water bottles is they are compatible with what I use to filter water, the Sawyer Squeeze. This is a super popular water filter. You can get these at Walmart. I think they're around $30. They're all over Amazon. I will leave links in the description box below where you can find these and some other gear I'm gonna talk about. But this thing threads right on top of a smart water bottle. If in the event you were to lose your cap, no big deal, threads right on there. You can drink directly from the bottle if you so choose to. So what I personally do is I bring two one liter smart water bottles and my dirty water bag. This will hold up to another two liters. So you can always fill this up if you really need the extra water and bring it with you. The next thing I want to talk about that can have a major weight penalty is how you pack your food. Are you bringing way too much? If you're coming back from trips with a whole bunch of leftover food, maybe before you go, start rationing things out a little bit and thinking ahead of what you're going to eat each day. Rather than bringing the whole big giant bag of trail mix that you're not going to eat, repackage it and bring maybe a third of the bag or half the bag if you're hungry. Same thing applies for pitas or um, soft shell tacos. Rather than bring all six, bring three, maybe four. It, it adds up, trust me. Another thing that I used to be guilty of and some of the people I backpack with still are is they'll bring the entire jar of peanut butter. This is pretty heavy to have in your food pack. Instead, what I like to do is bring packets of peanut butter. I'll bring one for each day and it weighs a whole lot less than a whole jar and help save you a lot of space in the meantime. If you don't like packets, they make cups. You can also get these at the Dollar General. Super cheap, big fan of that. So yeah, repackage your food. Don't bring the whole big bag of whatever it is you want. Think about how much of this am I really gonna need? You know, go from there. That'll help save a lot of weight and space in the long run, I promise. One more thing regarding food is what you're actually eating your food with. I know this might seem like a good idea to some of you, the fold out spoon. It's great for car camping, you know, or being in a campground, whatever. But if your goal is to save weight, then I recommend a titanium spoon or in my case, spork. 
This is about nine or ten dollars on Amazon. It's some off-brand, works great. I have no issues with it whatsoever. Something else I like about it is the handle is long. So when I'm digging inside of some of my dehydrated meals, I'm not getting my hand inside of the bag. I'm able to reach the bottom of the bag with that longer handle, which is nice. Disposable plastic spoon will work just as fine. It's super lightweight. You know, you can throw it out when you're done or reuse it on multiple trips if you're that much of a f***ing cheapskate. All good. The next thing I want to talk about is clothing. The first thing I want to recommend with that topic is ditch the cotton. Cotton is heavy, especially if it gets wet or damp, and if it does, it takes forever to dry. So ditch the big bulky cotton hoodie, cotton sweatpants, and my recommendation as an alternative is to use a polyester, you know, synthetic blend type material. There's a couple reasons for that. They dry really fast if they get wet. They're moisture wicking to pull some of the sweat off your body and they have antimicrobial properties that helps reduce some of the stench that you're going to accumulate while you're backpacking. Another thing is you don't need the extra outfit. I bring the clothes that I'm going to hike in that I'm wearing when I get to the trailhead. I depending on you know conditions we'll have a puff jacket in my pack and a rain jacket which I always bring no matter what every time I brought an extra pair of pants you know the two extra shirts all these what if and just in case items I've literally never used them every time I came back and they just added extra weight and took up space in my pack and I never used it um, I know that's a hard thing for some people to get used to but if you learn your layering system which just comes with time and, and you know, trying different methods, you can dial in something that you have, you know, your long sleeve shirt that you're wearing, your puff jacket, rain jacket. I do recommend one, maybe two extra pairs of socks, depending on the environment and the conditions that you're gonna be in. It's important to keep your feet healthy, of course. And if you really want one extra pair of undies, one extra pair of underwear, one extra pair of tidy whities Tidy whities Who the f wears tidy whities you know what I'm trying to say. I like having something somewhat fresh to wear so I'm not just laying in my sweaty, stinky clothes that I hiked in all day while I'm trying to sleep. So I do bring a pair of base layer bottoms and a base layer top, which again is the synthetic blends. They pack down super small and they are super lightweight so you feel you know, more comfortable when you're laying in your, your bag, your quilt, your hammock. The next and final topic I wanna to talk about is toiletries and miscellaneous items. First thing I wanna say is ditch the deodorant. Trust me, you don't need deodorant. You're gonna smell whether you use it or not. It just takes up extra space and adds a little bit of a weight penalty to your pack. Smelling bad is a part of backpacking. Everybody does, nobody cares. What I like to use as an alternative to freshen up a little bit is I use these dude wipes. You can get them at Walmart. You can get different brands online, Amazon, wherever. Clean all your dude and dudette parts. Dude wipes. I try to remember to brush my teeth every day. I bring a little travel size toothpaste and a little travel size toothbrush. Rather than bringing a whole big tube of toothpaste, bring those little travel guys. They're super lightweight, they pack down small, and that will be more than sufficient while you're out on the trail. Another thing I like to use is a uh, popular item is Dr. Bonner's soap. It's a multi-use, multi-purpose soap. It's environment friendly non-toxic some people i don't personally do it but some people even use the peppermint scented dr bonners to brush their teeth with and again that's another thing that i repackage into something smaller because there's no way i'm going to need that whole bottle and what i have wrapped around there is luco tape that would be enough for several trips in case that you get blisters on your feet you need it to maybe help repair a tent pole or a piece of gear or whatever so rather than bringing that whole giant roll that will take you years to get through you just use a little bit and wrap it around. What I do is wrap it around that little bottle of Dr. Bonner's soup. I see some people bring these giant medical kits that have splints and tourniquets and snake bite venom extract extractor that doesn't work. That's not even a real thing. You don't need all that stuff. The Luco tape's great for blisters. I might bring an extra little packet or two of antibiotic ointment and maybe two or three band-aids. Um, but you should really not have the need for anything more than that when you're out backpacking. In the event you get achy on the trail and you need some sort of anti-inflammatory, an ibuprofen, Advil, whatever your flavor is, rather than bringing that whole bottle, 
which can, if you don't have packed right, can the whole way down the trail, which is going to drive you and everybody else crazy that's with you. Again, just repackage what you think you might need. I usually bring some vitamins with me, anything to just keep, keep the daily grind going. You know what I'm saying? Another thing that people bring that is just, in my opinion, completely pointless is extra rope. You do not need extra rope, ever, really, for anything. You're not out playing MacGyver, you're backpacking, so ditch the rope. Something else that can help you reduce pack weight is switching to, if you don't already have one, a rechargeable headlamp. This thing is a beast. It's the Nightcore something headlamp. You can recharge it, you don't need extra batteries, it's super lightweight. This thing is crazy bright. It's brighter than any headlamp I've ever personally owned that required batteries. So if you do have a battery powered headlamp, put fresh batteries in before you leave. You won't need to bring extras with, and in the event you do, just bring one extra set of batteries. The last and final thing I wanna to talk to you about to help reduce pack weight is like a preference thing. All these things are preference things, but I switched from a camp chair. I got this thing on Amazon for like 30 bucks, so it's cheap. Some people love their camp chairs. If you do, that's fine, whatever. But I switched to what's called the Thermarest Z Seat. I love this thing. It can be a multi-purpose used item. I use it to fan the fire sometimes. You know, rather than getting my face down there and blowing on it, I'll just take this and fan the fire with it a little bit. You have to be careful with this, but I have in a pinch used it as a windscreen to help block some wind while I'm boiling water. Obviously it makes a great sit pad when you're sitting on rocks, cold ground, whatever the case may be. This comes with me on every single trip now and I love it. So obviously there are a ton of different ways out there that you can reduce pack weight and save space outside of having to buy all new gear, you know, ultralight backpack, ultralight quilt, all those things. There's ways that you can do it with gear that you currently have. For me personally, I've been a lot less fatigued when I've gotten to camp after putting in, you know, 10 to 15 miles in a day. And, um, you know, my shoulders, hips, knees, feet, all those things just feel less beat down as a result of reducing that pack weight. And if for some reason there's the item that you really want to bring with, and it makes you feel better and you're more comfortable to have it with you out on trail, by all means, bring it. I'm not telling you not to. I'm just trying to give suggestions on how you can have a more comfortable experience while being in the backcountry. I'd love to hear some of your ideas and things that you do. Bouncing information off of each other is a great way for us all to learn and get better at backpacking. Well guys, that's it. I hope you were able to find some value in this. I hope it helps make your backpacking experience more enjoyable. Thanks again so much for joining me here on Backcountry Treks, and we'll see you next time.